Right, good evening. Um, welcome to the planning committee. Um, I do just have a few notes that I read out at every meeting, so if you've been here before, apologies, it will be a little bit boring for you, but I do have to say it all. Right, so we have a PA system, so mobile phones should be on, off or silent, and there is no um, fire drill planned. The proceedings are filmed, as you can see, and will be available on the Woken Borough website. You can see from the camera position, committee <coughs> members, council officers and registered speakers will be recorded. But speakers may ask not to be filmed, but their comments will be audio recorded. The planning committee is made up of nine elected members, and I shall ask each one of them to introduce themselves, starting with Wayne over there. Right, Wayne Smith, member for Hurst. Michelle Shepard, you member for women. Malcolm Richards, a member for Norris in Woodland. Also a member for Loughton in uh, Woodley. Philip Holdsworth, member for Willis. Uh, John Jarvis, member for Twyford. And so I'm Tim Holton and I'm from Hawkton in Lower Alley. And we also supported and advised by a variety of professional council officers. Now I'll ask those to introduce themselves, starting from my right. Arabella Landon, I'm the clerk to the committee. I'm Mary Sarin, I'm the Solicitor Advising Committee this evening. <coughs> I'm Justin Turvey, I'm the Lead Officer for Development Management, here to advise members. I'm Chris Easton, I'm the Service Manager for Highways, and here again to advise members on priorities. Thank you. And on my far left are the planning officers who will be introduced when they are doing their applications. Procedure, procedure. This is a quasi-judicial committee with full set procedures and conduct. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Then I will call in turn only those who are pre-registered to speak. Please come forward to the table. The microphone is controlled by the grey button on the base. The time limit of three minutes for each category of speaker will be strictly enforced. So please ensure you get your key points across within your allotted time. Members of the committee are interested in the quality of what you have to say, not for how long you speak. I emphasise again that only those who are pre-registered to speak may do so. No others, including town or parish councillors, agents, applicants, objectors or supporters, are permitted to address the committee, ask questions or interrupt the meeting. Following the planning officer's presentation and the comments of registered speakers, the planning committee members will consider, question and seek clarification for the application and hopefully reach a decision which may or may not agree with the planning officer's recommendation. Finally, a reminder that the local planning authority's role is to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they are a good idea or indeed if they are needed, whether they are too costly or whether there are alternative uses. So thank you very much and I shall now move on to the agenda. And the first item on the agenda is apologies. I'll ask Abella for the apologies. Just the two apologies from Councillor Ross and Councillor Kaiser. Thank you. And the second item is the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any amendments to those minutes? And please have a show of hands then that they are correct. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? No, no members need to declare any interest. Are there any applications to be deferred or withdrawn? There's none, Chair. There's none to be done. Excellent. Right, then we move on to item 27, which is on page 30, and that's 15 to 27, the High Street, Wargrave. This is a full application for the demolition of the car showroom plus, Sun, plus Suncroft property. Proposed direction of 10 dwellings with car parking, community space, being inside the storage. And it's before the committee as it's a major application. I'd just like to add that this was deferred from last month for the developer to consider some points that were raised by the committee, namely car parking and the, the rear access. All other points were considered acceptable, and I would appreciate the speakers and members concentrate on these points only. I will now hand over to the case officer tonight, the case of case Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I shall read the first refresh committee of the application before focusing on um, those 
there's a few before us giving the referral of uh, parking and um, the access. The site is located between Walgrave High Street and Walgrave Hill. The site consists of the garage Walgrave Motors and the dwelling Suncroft. For the purposes of, of refreshing, as set out within the previous committee meeting, the proposal would involve the erection of 10 dwellings, a mix of 6 times 2 bed houses, 2 times 2 bed huts, and 2 times 3 bed duplex units, following the demolition of the existing buildings on the site. The, the rest of this presentation now focuses on how these issues of uh, parking and the real access have been addressed. The previous plan showed a vehicular access to the north, onto from Morgan Hill, and an access to the High Street. During the previous committee meeting, members raised concerns regarding the safety of the junction by Morgan Hill. <coughs> this application has been revised to now close up the access from Morgan Hill. Uh, condition 14 requires that. Uh, along with the members' update, to be sucked up in perpetuity prior to the uh, commencement of the development. In order to achieve access to the buildings to the back, the Larity site has been altered to allow for an access to go through the site via um, the access on the high street. This is required when the, the block of buildings um, towards the high street to be narrowed slightly in order to accommodate this. Vehicles can remove maneuvers safely within the site and enter the new site in forward gear. There is a bin store located to the rear of the site, uh, which will be accessed as how are the other bins collected for the dwellings in the area. There will be no vehicle access from the to the tool from the site by the break hill and only pedestrian sidewalks. The block facing more break hill that we shown in these images. So the amended elevation is the one above and that has been narrowed by 1.6 metres to allow for vehicle access. To the top. But overall, there's no significant change to the appearance of those buildings. The proposal has also been revised to um, substantially increase level parking, going from 17 bays to 23. This is significantly in excess of the council standards. The condition 13 is imposed to set out what bays would be allocated to unallocated and explicit bays. <coughs> Regarding members' <coughs> issues, we have received comments from the Parish Council and the Alms House. Um, these are detailed along with our response to the members' update. But um, the parish has raised concerns regarding the bus stop, safety residues the bus stop, and regarding visibility for, drive, visibility for drivers on the main road, uh, entering that and exiting the site. <laughs> Issues of visibility displays are addressed by Commission 9. And uh, with regard to the bus stop, and this is considered acceptable in terms of highway safety and the council's public transport teams are raised that concerns. Um, concerns are raised by the Owl House, including the use of access by Royal Road Hill and um, the construction traffic and the lack of a trigger to require the closing of the access. Condition 12 has been amended to include um, the requirement that construction traffic cannot access the site and this construction traffic will need to should not should access the site via the high street and uh, condition four has been amended to require it to be stopped up require the access to the rear of our field to be stopped up before the commencement of development. 
other other updates relate to <coughs> the, the inclusion of plans demonstrating the um, building and associated, and then of the uh, plans. And buildings. <coughs> Therefore, it is considered that this application has addressed the concerns raised in the previous committee meeting and is recommended for approval. Okay, thank you very much. We have one uh, speaker pre registered, and that is Neil Pitcher from the Alm Houses. So if you'd like to come forward. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you say, I'm speaking on behalf of the trustees of the Woodcliffe Arms Houses. We've had cause to consistently object to the applications on this site, for which reasons I will not reiterate now, because the amended plan, uh, together with the planning officer's report, addresses our concerns about the use of the track from Walgrave Hill up to the Arms Houses for access to the development. Uh, the original, the planner's report that we saw first of all didn't actually stipulate at what point the site would be permanently sealed off in perpetuity. We've sought assurance on that point, uh, which was given to us verbally, and I now see that it is part of condition 14, that it will be sealed off before development is implemented. Um, with those assurances, uh, my sole purpose now really on behalf of the trustees and the residents is to thank the planning committee and the planning officers involved for what we regard as the diligent way this application has been processed over time. Uh, we would also like to thank our councillor John Horsall, who I believe uh, sends his apologies for not being present tonight and report our thanks to the input from Borgo Parish Council that have been very helpful. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Oh. Okay. Okay. Members, are there any questions, clarification? Philip? Then uh, Thank you, sir. It's one of the people who were opposed to the project last time. Um, I think the uh, everything has moved, the development has moved, uh, we have moved, the whole thing now is quite satisfactory in my view. So I'm happy to say that. Thank you. Michelle? Only one question. The 3.7 meter access going up to the other two um, dwellings, uh, is that large enough for um, most of the emergency services, such as fire, clients, and things like that? Uh, yeah, you're talking about this right here? Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, we're happy. That's sufficient. I mean, in terms of the fire plants, um, Box Fire Authority will obviously be consulted, building makes will obviously also be part of the next process. But in terms of for us, um, if they need to, we've often had schemes like this, and the fire department often just recommend that they'll do whatever necessary to get there. But in terms of access they get into the property, the frontage if they need to, and obviously the hoses are sufficient length to reach those back properties as well. Got, from the harvest point of view, we've got no concern. How will they get to the back gardens in the last two, the, the top <coughs> uh, off the arms house? Oh, right? here, yeah. probably yeah. similar to how they would access those properties if they were on fire, I imagine, up to the original road yeah. that leads to the river. Malcolm? Well, a couple of quick questions. Um, Chris won't be surprised if you went around with an entrance. But, uh, the, the entrance, it says that uh, it will be sufficient for two vehicles to pass on the entry. Is that assuming two cars, or is it going to be wide enough for, for instance, a delivery lorry, such as a pick for where people move in, and a car? Is it just going to be two cars, or can it cope with it? It's my understanding from looking at the plans that is the entrance is sufficient with it's 4.8 metres, which is pretty standard for most access points. Um, a Pickford's lorry isn't commonly going to be coming in and out of that entrance. Um, but on the rare occasion that does, then it's big enough you should be able to see it. But in terms of our safety for staff for their use, we're, we're, we're happy with 
And the big ones don't go in there anyway, so. Bent loads are not proposed to go in there, they clip from the rear from the front. <clears throat> Second question. Um, it says on page 17 that the, uh, basically the driveway requires um, material going in for 10 metres from the curb, which is a basic, presumably a, a porous type material. What happens after that 10 metres for the rest of the driveway? Is it tarmac? Is it paving stuff? What gravel? What do they have? What is it intended to be? The, the reason for putting that on is purely is a standard kind of. Um, Sufficient so for the vehicle. It basically is just to ensure that it's bonded for the first 10 metres to ensure that if the developer does wish to use anything, loose gravel or whatever it may be, that it doesn't migrate into the public highway, there's sufficient bonded surface to stop that from happening. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, I'm quite happy with you. Changes. Right, members, any other questions on the rear access or the car parking before we go to the vote then? Okay, well, the recommendation then is for approval, and it's set out on page 15. In the members' update, there's two amendments to the conditions, conditions 12 and 14. So, taking that all into account, please can I have a show of hands to all those in favour of passing this application? And that is unanimous. Thank you, members. is number 28 which is on page 53 which is there on Arborfield Garrison it's a reserve matters application for 79 dwellings including the internal access roads parking landscaping open space footpaths cycleways and suds it's before the committee it's a major application and those people that were on the committee back in 2015 went on site visit which I was one of those and the case officer in this one is Alex Thwaites and I'll hand over to him uh, thank you chair the application uh, they are presenting to you tonight sorry, is application reference 171333 at the Albertfield Garrison. Uh, the proposal is a reserve matters application for 79 units with associated infrastructure. Uh, the proposal also includes access from Biggs Lane. The applicant is Chris Nicholson. The proposal relates to land just north of Biggs Lane and is located within the Arthur Garrison Strategic Development Location or SDL. The current proposal represents the fifth phase of development on the site. Uh, just as a background, the outlying percent on the site was granted in April 2015 uh, and this established uh, both the principal development as well as the development parameters uh, that every proposal has to comply with. Before highlighting the actual parcel, uh, this is a plan of the art for the SDL as a whole. Uh, I've highlighted a few key infrastructure links on there. Uh, of particular note for this application is uh, Biggs Lane that dissects the site in the northern section. So this plan shows all the previous phases as well as parcel U2. Uh, parcel O1 and T located in the northeast corner. Uh, are, the, are the first two phases of the Oldfield Garrison uh, development, um, which are under construction. <coughs> Parcels A to G and H to J are located in the southwest, uh, and those are the third and fourth phases of development. Uh, so, finally, on that map, parcel U2, highlighted in orange, is the fifth phase, and that's the application for what tonight. It's also just quickly worth noting that parcel U2 falls within the same character area as parcel T and parcel O1, uh, known as the lakeside area. So moving on to the outline application and, the, and all the parameters that were set. Parcel U2 has a designated land use uh, for residential use. Uh, the proposals can be up to three storeys in height the parcel is split between medium and high density levels. Open space is included both in the parcel and immediately adjacent to both the east and the west. 
Now this is an aerial shot of the site as it currently stands. It's highlighted in red, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, you can see uh, some of the old garrison buildings, both within the site and around the site, but obviously these are eventually going to be demolished uh, and replaced with development when that comes forward. So moving on to the layout of the site. Uh, as you can see, the main access is quite central uh, with the proposal, uh, quite central within the proposal, sorry. Uh, and this side links uh, with, and this road links the site with Biggs Lane and future development to the north. Also, I'll show you a slide of density next, uh, <coughs> but in the high density section on the western side of the parcel, you can see this is where the majority of the uh, apartments are. Uh, and on the uh, eastern side, it's, it's uh, medium density, uh, and these are more detached houses that front onto the lake side, which is just on the east, just right here. Uh, so this, this is the density plan, uh, which I just described. Uh, so you can see the median density going to being located on the east, uh, shown in, by the yellow sector, and the high density in the dark sector. Moving on to some of the designs, uh, the proposal has a contemporary character that is reflective of the previously approved parcels, which are in the same character area, uh, this lakeside area. Uh, I've got a photo of that first uh, parcel, which is almost fully, fully built on a couple of slides, but I'll just show you a couple of examples of the units proposed first. Uh, so we've got street scene and uh, semi statue detached. Again, moving on quite contemporary design, a, a flat complex, apartment complex, sorry, and another street scene. So this is just a photo uh, from across the lake in the uh, constructed parcel A1 site uh, and some of those are completed now and also uh, occupied. Uh, so you can see they're very similar in design uh, but for this, for this application there's a few slight uh, design changes uh, that allow for interest as you go through the parcels. Uh, I alluded this, to this earlier but the proposal includes open space as well as being located immediately adjacent to the existing lake. Uh, the, the parcel also includes a pedestrian and cycle route along the front of the Biggs Lane and also along the front of the lake, uh, which connects the parcel to the wider SDL. Moving on to access and movement, again this site is accessed off Biggs Lane and includes a central 6.1 metre road that will link the site to the rest of the SDL. This will eventually become a bus route when the northern parcels come forward, uh, but obviously this is a phase development, so uh, that doesn't really go anywhere that way at the moment, but it will do. Parking levels have been assessed, and these are in accordance with WB standard, WBC standards. Uh, it's also just worth noting that every unit on site has at least one allocated space. Finally, just on the policy standards, Again, these are all in line with uh, working borough council standards, uh, with the only exception of four, <coughs> four of the units have a garden about half a metre, uh, up to a metre shorter than, than what we normally suggest in policy. Uh, however, being such a, such a low number and given the abundance of open space that is so easily accessible, it's not considered to be a significant issue. Uh, so therefore, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to the conditions in the report and the members update. Just to quickly go through the members update, the only thing I've added in is the addition of the, uh, the list of all the plans for the application, which we will secure by condition two. Thanks, Jen. Thank you very much. We have one speaker registered, which is Stuart Garnett from Samuels. If you'd like to come forward. Good evening, Stuart Garnett from Savills here on behalf of Craig.